What's up, everybody? Dave McCool here with Procore. I've got an awesome update for you with an integration to iConstruct. And so we're going to talk about clash detection. And one thing is for sure, everyone does clash differently. Uh, some people use selection sets. Some people use groups. Some people use rules. Um, some people like to export uh, all their clashes and, and report on them. So when we built our first integration with clash detection for coordination issues, uh, we built it in a way that was completely flexible, right? So um, you can use whatever method you want. You can export it as a report, as viewpoints, and then you can import it in as viewpoints so you can track it in coordination issues. But behind the scenes, what we were doing is talking to arguably the best clash management solution provider in the industry, which is iConstruct. Now, if you don't know about iConstruct, they've got a whole bunch of different tools, but what they've done is they've taken what I would say is their best tool, which is the clash management tool, and pulled it out and made it a standalone product, standalone plugin with a direct integration to coordination issues. And I'll show you that today. So uh, what I've done is I've made, so I, I prefer search sets and priority of systems, but for the sake of this uh, example today, I made one clash test that was MEPs versus structure. So structure versus all the MEPs and two inches of clearance for your monocoat. And uh, there's about 600 clashes. And so what I'm gonna do is I come up to iConstruct, go to group, and you can see all these clash tests. We're gonna focus on the structure versus MEPs. Uh, right here, I can create templates. I can create as many templates as I'd like. What that's going to do is save any of the settings that I have down here below. So you have a couple different options for grouping these clashes. I can group them by the elements. So what I did is I, I took the, um, the name, the source file name, as the first thing I want to group it by um, because I want the clash groups to be sorted out by HVAC, piping, and electrical. And then the second thing I did is I used the clash and used proximity and did it about five feet. So anything within five feet radius, a five foot radius is gonna be grouped in that as well. And so I'm gonna go ahead and run that on structure versus MEPs. Doesn't take too long, just finished up. And now let's go take a look at what that did. So just from a time savings perspective, I went from 600, 200 clashes, much more manageable. But at this point, I don't even need the clash detective window. Now I can go to the review uh, tab within iConstruct and it's gonna list out all those different group clashes. And you can see here HVAC, piping, and electrical. You can also see how many clashes are in each group. So I have six um, clashes in this group. If we take a look, we can rotate around and you can see it actually has, um, this looks like riser with the beam and the uh, slab is the conflict. But you can also see like this one with piping um, has 15. So it grouped all of these into one clash for me. Looks like it's clipping uh, the beam as well. Uh, another really unique tool is that you have all of these different shortcut commands here at the top. So I don't have to, if I want to do a selection box or I want to select, I don't have to come over to home and do it. I can select it right here. Um, additionally, I can isolate just the clash or I can do the dim other setting. Um, and one thing that I just love is the ability to make a new group. So if I am looking at this group of six, for instance, and I just want to uh, make a new group, I can come in here, select the two beams, or I could have just selected the duct actually, um, but I'll just select the two beams. And then there's this button that says new group, click that button. And now I've broken out just the duct and beams into one group. And then there's four that's the duct through the slab. And so now I can name this group, call it whatever I want. So duct and beam conflict, for instance, I can assign it. It's actually going to pull the assignees from coordination issues. So and assign it to myself. I can add a comment if I want. I can add red lines. Um, so in this comment, I'm going to say duct needs to move. And you can already see it's, it's wanting to give me some of the other comments I've made before. So if I say duct needs to move, I can create that comment. And now I've got duct needs to move. I have a comment here and it's assigned to me. So now what I'm going to do is close that out. You could do that for all your clashes and your groups, and then you can just push all of them into Procore. So if I log in, so now that I'm logged in, I can sort through these and find that issue that I assigned to myself, which is right here, duct and beam conflict. It's already checked. I can check multiple items that I want to send directly into the coordination issues, and then I just simply create. It doesn't take long, so I've, I've uploaded one issue. And so let's take a look at what that looks like on the web. So I come over to the web, I had seven issues, should have eight. 
which I do. If I come down and click on that duct and beam conflict, there's that screenshot. You can see duct and beam conflict. You can see the description where I left that comment, duct needs to move, might need an RFI, as well as the assignee. Direct integration pushes straight from the groups. Hopefully this will save you a ton of time. Um, we're excited about it, obviously. And then if you need to, you can elevate it. You can, you know, activity, you can write comments, collaborate with others. Um, again, this was a really exciting, fun integration for us, but the best products are the ones we build together. Please keep the comments flowing. Um, feel free to comment on this video. And you can also come up here and post an idea on anything around BIM and VDC. Thanks so much for watching.